Welcome back to Mrs. Achilles and Miss Parish's video series. Today we're talking about simplifying radicals. You might already be freaking out thinking, I don't know what a radical is. Well, it is simply a square root. So anytime you see a square root, you could also call it a radical. So the key to simplifying radicals is to factor out the perfect square factors until no more remain. So let's say we are presented with radical 80 or the square root of 80 and you're asked to simplify it. Previously, this is something we would just put in our calculator and get a decimal answer for. But if we want to be more precise in math, we're going to simplify it to its simplest form. So here, I'm breaking 80 into 4 times 20 because I know that 4 is a perfect square, 2 times 2. So I'm going to separate that to the square root of 4 times the square root of 20, which is equivalent to having both of them under one radical symbol or square root symbol. The square root of 4 is 2. So I'm done with the square root or radical sign at that point because the value is 2 times the square root of 20. Well, then I look at 20 and realize 4 times 5 is 20. 4 is a perfect square. So I'm repeating the process again. 2, I'm leaving that 2, times radical 4 times radical 5. Well, radical 4 is 2. The square root of 4 is 2. So now I have 2 times 2 times the square root of 5 or 4 radical 5. So that's what we would call simplifying radical 80 to its simplest form. Now, you'll see I did the same thing over here, but I noticed that 16 is actually a factor of 80, and 16 is the biggest perfect square I can pull out of 80. So the square root of 16 times the square root of 5 simplifies to 4 radical 5. You'll see that square root and radical are just interchangeable words. You can use one or the other. Does it matter which of these methods I use if I take out the biggest one or if I just start with the one that I can think of the easiest? I'm glad you asked, Ms. Pariso. It does not. Think about when you're simplifying a fraction. Maybe it's divisible by 4, but you didn't see that and you divide it by 2 first and then you divide by 2 again. You still should get to the same simplest form answer. Okay, thank you. All right. So you may have picked up that the easiest method of simplifying radicals is to try and find the largest perfect square factors possible. So factoring out the largest perfect square means you probably should know your perfect squares. Probably well, should or we should? You should. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying this pair. So. All right, perfect squares basically means one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine. So these numbers are your perfect square. They have a whole number square root. Okay, you could make a square with the square root of these numbers. Okay. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, etc. I would strongly recommend that you know your perfect squares up to 20. That means you should be studying 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, all the way up to 20 squared. I would hope you probably don't have to study these as much, so you're probably focusing on the 10 to 20. But know these perfect squares so that you can be kind of recognizing when they might be factors of the radicals you're trying to simplify. All right, I've got a few examples on the board here. Work out this one with me, okay? And then I'm gonna ask you to pause the video to work on the other two on your own. So if we wanna simplify radical 200, let's say I recognize 100 times two is 200. Now you see I just went ahead and spread them apart because remember the square root symbol of 100 times two is the same thing as the square root of 100 times the square root of two. What is the square root of 100 or radical 100? That's 10. So the simplest form of this is 10 radical 2. What if you didn't realize that 100 was a factor of 200? Let's say you went for 4 times 50, right? Radical 4 is 2, so now I have 2 radical 50. But then you take a look at this again and realize 2 times 25 is 50, and we know 25 is a perfect square, so we're going to do because 2 times 25 is 50. Notice I put the perfect square first because I'm going to be pulling that out towards the front. So the square root of 25 is 5. So I've got 2 times 5 times radical 2 or 10 radical 2. You'll see that both of them are the same answer. Just when I got there a little faster because I took the time to think about what could be the biggest perfect square that goes into that number. But again, if you can't think of the biggest, just think of a perfect square and keep dividing those out until you get to where you cannot pull out any more perfect squares. 
pause the video now and try both of these problems on your own. Welcome back. Hopefully you tried these problems. Let's think about the square root of 125. What perfect square factors go into 125? Well, that's going to be 25 and 5. The square root of 25 is 5. Radical 5. There's our simplest form. Notice I always put the number in front of the radical. Just like we always put a number in front of a variable, the same thing applies here. If we look at the square root of 72 or radical 72, I recognize that 36 is a factor of 72. And I know that 6 squared is 36, so I know 36 is a perfect square. Radical 36 is 6. Radical 2 is going to be my simplest form of radical 72. We hope you've enjoyed this video on simplifying radicals. Tune in next time.